sports. So on today's show, we're going to talk about the 2022 Baseball Hall of Fame candidates. So today, we're here to break this down for you guys and go through the list of the 2022 Baseball Hall of Fame candidates. Before we get started, if you guys would, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Click the bell to get notified every time we come out with a new video. So Anthony, we're going to start with the first time uh, ballot guy, which is David Ortiz, or called Big Poppy, uh, from the Boston Red Sox. So what are some things you think uh, in terms of stats uh, with Big Poppy? Uh, Big Poppy, I, I do say he gets in. He could be the only one that gets in this year with yeah. some of the variants we have out there with other players who may not be able to get in. But I do believe that David Ortiz is a Hall of Fame Hall of Famer. He hit 541 home runs, seven-time Silver Slugger winner, three-time World Series champ. I think that's going to be huge to help him get in this um, Hall of Fame inductee class. He had a little bit lower batting average than the 300 that everybody straps for in the MLB, but he batted right at 286, and he was a 10-time MLB All-Star. Yeah, I think a lot of positives go uh, Big Poppy's way in terms of three times World Series, which is the biggest one in my opinion. Well, to the production that he did, the postseasons that he yeah, had as yeah, well, yeah. Uh, whether it was that him playing first base or DH, so which was really big. Uh, so two, a lot of things to consider in terms of Big Poppy. One of the big factors that are that people are talking about, they bring it up, was when 2003 when he had some allegations going on in terms of steroids, PED use. He was bunched in with a bunch of guys at that time. Even though he never failed a drug test, it, you know, from that point on, he never failed a drug test. Uh, that's still something that's a cloud over his head. And do you think with those allegations, does this keep him out of the Baseball Hall of Fame? I would say no, just because his name isn't brought up like some of these other guys that's on the list that we we'll mentioned about Alex Rodriguez, Barry Bonds, Sammy Sosa. You know, he was accused of it back in 2003, like you said, but I don't feel like people talk about Big Poppy as much with PED use like they do some other players that we'll be talking about. So I think that he's got the edge over there, and I think he is a Hall of Fame candidate. I would vote him in if I had a vote. Yeah, I mean, you look at his stats, you know, you, you hit on it uh, just a few minutes ago, over 500 home runs, 541 to be exact, seven time Silver Slugger, uh, and then the, the big one, three-time World Series yeah. champ. So. Yeah, we believe Big Poppy's going to get in. Uh, we believe it's probably his first time he's going to get in. So, moving on to our next guy, we've got uh, you know let's let's lump these two guys in, or actually three guys in. Let's talk all about them all one because this is the big issue that's hovering around these guys right now. You got Alex Rodriguez, you got Roger Clemens, and then you got Barry Bonds uh, from the PED use. You know, Rodriguez comes out and admits to taking PEDs. Um, you know, and I think this is something we had a conversation about earlier is if you could take Alex Rodriguez when he came up with the Seattle Mariners till he got the Texas Rangers, till he got to them, he was on his way to being yeah. a baseball Hall of Famer. He didn't have to do this. Yeah. He selected to do this. Um, and the same thing goes for, you know, you look at Bonds and you look at Clemens, some of the same things there. So what's your take on, uh, we'll hit A-Rod first in terms yeah. of A-Rod. Well, I'll go ahead and say it. I believe all the guys should be in the Hall of Fame. I know they have the PED use allegations against them. Uh, but, I mean, you look at what you said there with Seattle and before he got to Texas. I mean, he was on his way to be in the Hall of Famer. Uh, he had finished with 600, 696 home runs. You know, he got suspended that one year, so he didn't right. even play baseball. The one season with the Yankees, he had over 300 stolen bases. He had a batting average of 295. Uh, just to have the PED allegations is going to hurt him, I believe. But if I had a vote, I would, I would definitely say he's in there. Yeah, I mean, too, I've been to the Baseball Hall of Fame. I uh, actually took my travel ball team up to Cooperstown. Um, I think it was in 2013. We went up for a week. Uh, it was one of the best times of my life. So, you know, if you guys are listening and they never been to Cooperstown, I highly recommend it. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And... Uh, Definitely want to go back one day. Yeah. Um, you know, one, one guy that's, that we, that's not in here that we haven't talked about is Pete Rose. Um, me, personally, I think Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame, hands down. Yeah, no questions asked. Put Pete in. Yeah, put him in, man. But if you go to the Baseball Hall of Fame, you know, there's a lot of things around there that they do talk about Pete Rose. Yeah. Even though he's not in the Baseball Hall of Fame, it's crazy to say that, but, but it is. But, yeah, going back to, you know, Bonds and Clemens and A-Rod here, um, if if A Rod gets in, Bond deserves to get oh, yeah. in. Clemens needs to get in. McGuire needs to, you know, 
no more wires need to get in. Yeah. So those guys in that past, because that was one of the best times of baseball. Yeah, and it helped grow, you know, baseball. Oh, it's man. sport it is today, you know, it was kind of, you know, not as America's pastime as some people call it. Uh, it was kind of dying out right. from the late 90s, early 2000s, and then all of a sudden between 2002 and now, I mean, people just hit their home runs left to great. I believe they helped grow the game of baseball back in those years. Yeah, 98, 97, 98 year was tremendous with McGuire and Sosa. Yep. Uh, I remember like it was yesterday, so. I mean, it was must watch TV, if you will, uh, just watching them chase each other's home run stats, uh, battling it out to the Cubs and the uh, Cardinals played a good bit. Right. I mean, I did hope, I mean, I do think that the PED use, you know, some people frown upon it. I do think it helped grow the game of baseball though. Yeah. And two, you know, we both played the game of baseball, so two, we understand that, you know, when you're trying to hit a 95, 98 mile an hour fastball, yeah, you, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. It's probably the hardest thing yeah. in the world to do. Um, so two, uh, it is extremely difficult. Yeah. And just because you take PEDs, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be successful. Yeah. It may, so, it may help you hit the ball a little bit farther, but right. it's not going to time your bat to the, the ball by the by the pitcher there. Yeah. So I'm going to tie these two guys in because, too, they've been uh, in, in, you know, in this race for a few years now, and they're getting some traction right now, and they may be able to slide in this year. I don't think they will actually slide in this year. I think it would be by next year, the year after. And these two guys I'm talking about is Scott Rowland and Todd Helton. Yep. So you want to talk about those two guys? Uh, Scott Rowland, like you said, he, he's getting a little – Getting a little heat, you know, as the years go by. Uh, he's only been eligible for a few years now, but each year he's, he seems like he's getting a few more votes. Uh, Scott Rowland's an eight-time Gold Glove winner, seven-time MLB All-Star. His batting average a little bit lower, too, like Big Poppy's was. He only batted 281, and he never got that World Series championship ring that everybody, every baseball player stressed for as well. So I think that may hurt him a little bit. Overall, solid player for Scott Rowland. Right, very, very good player. Yeah, very solid player. When we talk about Hall of Fame candidates, though, I don't know if my, me personally I could put him in right. the list. I'm with you 100% here. Um, you know, batted 281. But over his career, I didn't necessarily look at him as a, as a Hall of Famer. Yeah. You know, um, I go back to a guy before that time with the Phillies, Mike Schmidt. When you look at Mike Schmidt and his career, his numbers, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Um, in terms of Scott Rowland, what he produced, uh, like, like you said, he's a very good player, uh, had a very good career, but he is a Hall of Famer, in my opinion, no. Yeah. But that doesn't mean next year or the year after he don't get inducted. Yeah. So, but it was right now, I'd say no. Uh, moving to the next guy, Todd Helton, uh, is, is on the same wavelength, I think. You know, he may not, probably won't get in this year, maybe next year or the year after, but you look at his numbers overall, you know, he batted 316, uh, for his career, that's pretty impressive, about 316. The other thing that's very impressive is uh, he ended his career 459 on base percentage. So he was getting on base almost every other time, yeah. which is extremely impressive. Uh, you look at the gold gloves he had, you look at the all-stars. The one thing that he didn't get was the World Series. Uh, necessarily didn't play with the greatest teams but in Colorado, but I look at Todd Helton and Todd Helton was probably the best player to ever play to suit up for the Colorado yeah. Rockies. And you know, you got Larry Walker that played with him for a few seasons uh, and in, is in, in the Baseball Hall of Fame. But for me, I think Todd Helton is uh, Mr. Colorado Rockies yep. and was that way for 17 years. So do I think he's going to get in? Not necessarily this year, but I think next year, the year after, he will. And you know, the question mark around him has always been, or anybody that plays for Colorado is hitting a course field. Yep. They have that hitter's edge, if you will. Right. You know, that's a hitter's ballpark there, so he does have a slight edge with his batting statistics over some of these other guys on the list. I'm going to give you a guy that I think should definitely get voted in, uh, and that I could be a little biased being an Atlanta Braves fan, but that is Andrew Jones. Uh, the best years he played was between 98 and 2007 with Atlanta. Uh, during those 10 years, he was a 10-time Gold Glove winner. He hit 434 home runs. He stole 152 bases. Uh, there's been four other guys before Andrew Jones that hit at least 350 home runs with 10 or more gold gloves. That is Mike Schmidt, Willie Mays, Ken Griffey Jr., and Johnny Bench. All four of those guys hit at least 350 home runs and was a 10-time gold glove winner. And they all got elected into the Hall of Fame their first year of eligibility. Not only could Andrew Jones, you know, hit the ball, steal you a base, he could go up and rub that home run. He could go out and make that play in the gap. He could throw you on at home. I believe Andrew Jones is a Hall of Fame candidate and should be inducted in. 
somebody want to tie into to Andrew Jones? Because both of these guys, Andrew was a, to me one of the best, if not the best, center fielder of all time to play in the major league. I mean, you think about the ten year span that he had with the Atlanta Braves and how he commanded center field. No doubt about it. Um, you ask anybody, you know, who you believe is the best center fielder of all time, whether it's Willie Mays or Andrew Jones. Those are the two guys that's going to be talked about the most. Yeah. So, how can you leave that guy out? Yeah. Um, the next guy I talk about too is Omar Vizquel, uh, defensive shortstop. Uh, Omar won 11 Gold Glove. Uh, the thing that separates Andrew between Omar, I believe, is just the offensive side. Off, you know, Andrew was dangerous at the plate. Yeah. Uh, you know, he finished his career with 434 home runs. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Uh, where Omar at the plate wasn't that impressive. So I think that's the reason why Andrew should get in and why Omar will not get in, uh, just from an offensive defensive standpoint. Yep. So the next guy to talk about is has been uh, politically why should he get in, should he get in for what he said when he was done with his career, and that is, you know, he didn't want them to pull his name out anymore. He didn't yeah. want his name to be considered. Up, yeah. yeah, is Kurt Schilling. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, 100%. This guy should be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. If you're just looking at his baseball stats, oh, what he man. did while he was playing the sport of Major League Baseball, he's definitely a Hall of Fame candidate. Well, like you said, what's going to kill him is what happened and what he said after his baseball career was over. And I can care about him, too. I'm not getting into politics or what you believe in, what yeah. you do. But at the end of the day, what did you do on the diamond? Yeah. And this guy performed. Yep. Uh, in the postseason, this guy performed. He's got three World Series in 2000 and 2001. He was the MVP of the World Series. Yep. So how does this guy still not in the baseball Hall of Fame? It's a shame. Yep. I mean, it is a shame. Just like I go back and I'll rant forever about Pete Rose not being in, but for Kurt Schilling not to be in is crazy. Yep. It doesn't make any sense to me. So Kurt Schilling is huge uh, there. But also, too, we did have some a few other candidates that are on the ballot that, you know, you got Gary Sheffield, Billy Wagner. Um, Wagner, in terms of his career, had some good numbers. He just fell in the postseason. Yep. You know, he really just didn't perform in the postseason, which was big. You got Sheffield that had put up some really good numbers and very consistent over his years. He does have a World Series with the Marlins, but overall, just the numbers, you know, just not, he wasn't, he was a very, very good player. Yep. Kind of like Scott Rowland and Todd Helton. Very, very good players. Will he get in one day? Maybe. But as of right now, I just don't see him getting in this year. Yep. And this list, I mean, who knows, maybe nobody gets in this year, but if I had to say any guys, I'm, I'm, I'm putting Barry Bonds in there, I'm putting Kurt Schilling in there, I'm putting Andrew Jones in there, and if I put Bonds in there, I gotta add Sosa in there, I believe, as well as uh, Roger Clemens. Yeah, you got, you know, you got A-Rod and add to that too, so you got a lot of guys, so it comes down to they're gonna let these guys in or not, yep. you know, which would change, you know, when you go to Cooperstown, it'll change the landscape of the Baseball Hall of Fame forever, which, you know, I, kids growing up today, you know, if they don't follow the game of baseball and they just go to Cooperstown, they probably never heard of Barry Bonds, yep. Roger Clemens, some of the greats of all time that play the game. Uh, but they're always, you know, they always have an asterisk around their name. Yep. So, well, guys, <clears throat> that's our list in terms of uh, – candidates but too we just want to thank you guys for watching also don't forget down in the comment section put down there who you believe should be in the baseball hall of fame do you believe that bonds and pete rose and uh kurt schilling roger clemens alex rodriguez do you believe these guys should be inducted into the baseball hall of fame let us know for charles anthony thanks for watching we'll see you on the next show put pete rose in